Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi. Thanks for coming to the talk. I'll be talking about our work on polyhedral auto, auto transformation without using integer linear programming. This is joint work with Uday and Albert Cohen from India. The outline of the talk is as follows. First, I'll give an introduction to affine transformations. We'll see a few uh, ILP-based auto transformation frameworks. We'll then see the relaxation of the integer linear programming problem in, in, this, in one of the transformation frameworks. Then we present our solution, uh, our auto transformation framework, and finally conclude with some of the experimental results. So affine transformations in general are known to improve parallelism and locality. So the example code shown here is from is from the heat, sorry is from the heat uh, 1D benchmark. So uh, the figure here shows the iteration space. We have three dependencies given by the dependence vectors 1 0 1 1 1 and 1 minus 1. This loop nest has poor temporal locality and therefore one would want to tile it. Since we have uh, dependencies both going in, uh, both going in the forward and the backward directions, that is, in both going to your right and to your left, this loop nest cannot be tiled. Uh, if you try to do a rectangular tiling, you will not be able to ha ha uh, get a total order on the tiles. So, one way to do that, to do rectangular tiling, is to transform the iteration space. If you skew the J loop with I the iteration space would be transformed as follows to a parallelogram, and then you can perform rectangular tiling on this. Note that in this transformed space, all dependencies are only in one direction. So once you have the, tra once you have the transformed space, the ti you can generate the code using code generators like Klug or Omega Plus or ISL. Uh, any of these code generators can be used. So most of the uh, affine transformations include permutations, loop skewing, loop shifting, loop scaling, fusion, distribution, loop reversals, and even complex combinations of these. In general, an affine transformation for a, state, for a single statement can be represented using this transformation matrix. The coefficients of uh, the elements of this transformation matrix are called transformation coefficients, which are typically integers. The rows of this transformation matrix have to be linearly independent of each other in order to ensure certain interesting properties uh, of the transformed space. So the uh, goal of the polyhedral transformation frameworks is to find these transformation coefficients for every statement of your loop nest. So, there have been many transformation, auto transformation frameworks proposed. The state of the art ones that inc include LLVM Poly, PPCG in ISL, Pluto, Pluto Plus, R Stream, and most of these transformation frameworks construct an ILP problem. And the solution to the ILP problem will give you the transformation coefficients. These frameworks have different objectives, which may be to minimize latency, synchronization, or maximize locality and parallelism, or combinations of these. Our, uh, in, in this work, we consider Pluto as our ILP, ILP transformation framework. The cost model of Pluto use, is used in most of the other transformation frameworks in some form, of the other, some form or the other. The ILP, the ILP formulation in Pluto uh, is as follows. The variables in the formulation are transformation coefficients. The, the constraints in the ILP include the dependence validity constraints, which also enable tiling. The dependence distance bounding constraints, which give an upper bound on the dependence distances. The linear independence constraints, which enforce linear independence of the rows of the transformation matrix. And the objective is to minimize the dependence distance, that is, it tries to schedule the dependence iterations as close to each other as possible. So this, with, with this uh, background on the ILP formulation in Pluto, we, we actually ran Pluto on a large, uh, large code basis. Basically, uh, for these code bases were actually previously studied in the existing literature. 
And if you consider the spec CPU's 2006 benchmark from uh, ZSMP benchmark from the spec suit, we, uh, there were three hotspots which with about 150 statements, and Pluto's auto transformation framework took around three hours to find the transformation. So there are statement clustering heuristics proposed which try to reduce the number of statements seen by the auto transformation framework. Even with those heuristics, we, we came across certain examples where Pluto does not scale for code, code bases with, uh, with a few hundreds of statements. So what is, the, what is the primary issue here? The first guess would be the ILP problem itself. It is exponential in the number of statements. So uh, that, that might be one of the reasons for why, uh, why, why Pluto's auto transformation framework is taking a lot of time. The other reason might be uh, is the construction of the linear independence constraints itself. Uh, as we observed, this is the most time consuming step in the, Pluto's, in the whole of Pluto's auto transformation framework. So the objective of this talk would be to avoid using ILP and we, sh we do not want to construct linear independence constraints but at the same time, we do not want to lose on performance. So we want to find the same transformation as Pluto did in the first place. So the first thing that comes to mind when you want to get rid of ILP is to relax it so that you come back to polynomial time. So if we relax the con integer constraints on variables of Pluto ILP, we make a few observations because of this, uh, due to the relaxation. The first observation that we make is that when you relax, this, uh, cons uh, relax the integer constraints, the resulting LP formulation, which we refer to as Pluto LP, if the solution exists, then the solution is rational. This is because the variables, uh, the coefficients of the variables in the LP formulation are integers. Therefore, the solution is ra rational. This is a known result. And what we also observe is that when you, whenever you have a solution, you can scale the solution up to get into integral. So, uh, to, uh, you can scale it by any any constant, which is any constant with, without violating the dependencies. So, the scale solution will not violate the dependencies. So, with these two observations, we have the following theorem, which says, if we have a solution to the LP formulation of Pluto, then there exists a solution to the ILP formulation as well, and vice versa. So, suppose we have a we have a solution to the LP formulation, then uh, by the first observation, we know that it's rational. So you can take the denominators of the rational solutions, L uh, uh, LCM of the denominators of the rational solutions, and scale it up, and uh, scale the solution up. So the scaled solution is integers. Since the constraints of both Pluto LP and Pluto ILP are the same, the scaled solution will not violate any of the constraints. And it, the resulting solution will be an integer. So this is one way to recover, uh, to get an integral, so integral solution from the rational solution of Pluto LP. However, there are some practical issues in realizing this. So there are subopt uh, suboptimal integral solutions are found after scaling the solutions of Pluto LP. This is because you cannot precisely model the space of linear, indi uh, linear independence constraints in the rational space. So what what are the effects of this relaxation this the relax the relaxed solution man the suboptimalities that uh, due to relaxation they manifest as loops spurious loop skewing transformations which you would not have wanted so this significantly degrades performance and the performance degradation can uh, can be up to 2x in some cases uh, can be up to 10x in some cases so uh, okay, what happened, uh, we lost in performance. If we see what happened to auto transformation time, we didn't gain much. So the LP formulation was around 20% faster, but the total auto, uh, auto transformation time was still comparable to what it was. So the objective of the next part of the talk would be to overcome the suboptimalities that resulted due to that, uh, that, 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 uh, that uh, stemmed from this relaxation and also to avoid the construction of linear independence constraints. So this was the this is the Pluto's auto transformation framework which uses an ILP formulation 
We relaxed it to use an LP formulation, but we saw there were suboptimalities. So in order to uh, in order to get rid of these suboptimalities, we decompose the we decompose the transformation affine transformation stage itself into three components. The first phase is the fusion and the permutation component, which looks for loop fusion and permutation. And the second phase is the loop scaling and shifting phase, which finds the loop scaling and shifting factors for the permutation given from this component. And finally, we introduced loop, we introduced loop skews only if necessary. The, at each stage, we call this framework as Pluto LPDFP because at each stage it uses an LP formulation and it decouples the problem of finding fusion and permutation from the rest of the auto transformation framework. We also avoid the construction of linear independence constraints because the linear independence is encoded in the flow itself. In order to find fusion and permutation, we use a black box. What the black box do does is to find permutations by f dimension matching. That is, you consider the statement S1 here. It matches the dimension of uh, S1 and S2. It matches the dimension of uh, dimension i of S1 with the dimension i of S2, and the dimension j of S1 with the dimension j of S2. So you get an identity transformation as shown here, but it, the two J loops cannot be fused directly because this statement would read a stale value of the array A. So in order, in order to find the loop scaling and shifting, uh, shifting factors, we solve the tiling validity constraints, the dependence distance bounding constraints, which were same as, in, uh, which were same as the Pluto's auto transformation framework, then we find the scaling and shifting uh, uh, scaling. We add a few scaling and shifting constraints. These constraints are inferred from the original uh, permutation that we had, and we solve it with the same objective uh, uh, as Pluto, uh, as as a LP formulation instead of ILP. And we scale the rational solutions to integers. And after scaling, we sh we get the transformation in which the J loop is scaled and shifted. So. But till now, what we, we ignored loop skewing transformations, uh, but we know that there are classes of programs like stencils or PD solvers where loop skewing transformations, uh, loop skewing tra transformations enable loop tiling. In this case, uh, this was the same example that we saw. Uh, in this case, the permutation black box gives us the identity transformation and there are no loop skewing or shifting transformations introduced. And we saw that the dependence 1 minus 1 prevented tiling because it was in a different direction. So what, what do we do now? We want to introduce loop skews only if it enables loop tiling. We want to, uh, uh, to introduce loop skews, we again solve tiling validity constraints and dependence distance bounding constraints. These ensure correctness of our transformation. And we also. <coughs> add certain constraints which we call the skewing constraints. These are added based on the level at which we are introducing the skew and the levels at which the dependencies are satisfied. So in this case we are introducing skew at the level at the second level and this dependence is satisfied at the first level so we introduce constraints to set the lower bounds of those two dimensions, coefficients of those two dimensions. And then we scale the rational solutions to integers, and we finally find the transformation, uh, which was uh, same as Pluto, which was same as what Pluto did. So, we want, uh, once we did this, we have we got rid of the construction of uh, we got rid of the ILP formulation. We also got rid of the construction of linear independence constraints. Now we'll see the impact on the auto transformation times. So we. We compare our framework Pluto LPDFP with Pluto and ScaleFuse. ScaleFuse was proposed by Mehta et al. in PLDI 2015, to demo, which, also, which demonstrated the scalability issues in the ILP-based trans, ILP transformation frameworks. We use GLPK and Gurobi as ILP solvers, and all our, experiment, all our experiments was conducted on the machine with the following configuration. We use benchmarks from SPEC CPU 2006 and NAS PB. 
these two were uh, provided by uh, these two were studied by Mehta et al as well and we also got a few more benchmarks from polymage dsl uh, with larger number of loop nests if we the spec cpu 2006 benchmarks these were the hardest for us because these had over 150 statements each and what we saw was pluto lpdfp was faster than pluto by a geomean factor of 250 uh, 252 times however if we saw scale, if you see the performance of the auto transformation time of scale fuse it was faster by a factor of 1.6x which means the statement clustering heuristics in scale fuse had a significant impact so the clustering heuristics was able to cluster a large number of statements around 8 to 10 of them into a single cluster thereby significantly reducing the number of statements seen by the auto transformation framework so we incorporated those statement clustering heuristics as well into our framework and we see a performance imp a geomean improvement of 2.6x in the auto transformation time and what we found out was in all these cases we found the same transformation as pluto therefore there was no loss in performance of the generated code nas benchmarks these were much simpler even uh, with uh, 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 we outperformed the statement clustering heuristics as even with the sa without the statement clustering heuristics we outperform both pluto and scale fuse and we find the transformation in uh, same transformation as pluto in these cases as well Poly in in case of polymage we found two interesting applications local laplacian and pyramid blending where both pluto and scale fuse did not terminate in over 8 hours while our auto transformation framework we were able with our auto transformation framework we were able to do it in under 4 seconds so th this tells us that just with statement clustering heuristics or uh, using statement clustering heuristics just postpones the problem of scalability to uh, to a next uh, to a f to a further distance but we in this with this decomposition and relaxation we actually solve the problem of scalability issues in ilp based transformation frameworks so the, to summarize our results, we have an improvement, compile time improvement of 68x over Pluto and 5.6x over scale fuse. And we also found the same transformation as Pluto did in the benchmarks that we studied here. So uh, there, was no loss of, uh, there was no loss of performance. The other obvious question that would come is what was the impact of the solver? So, we tried both GLPK and Gurobi. GLPK is an open source commercial solver, and Gurobi is an open source solver, and Gurobi is a commercial solver. So constraint solving in case of Pluto ILP was faster with Gurobi by a factor of 1.5x. But in case of GLPK, uh, in, in case of Pluto LP DFP, Gurobi, GLPK was faster uh, because the problem of uh, finding uh, the problem uh, creating a glpk problem was much cheaper and we solve a lot of linear small linear programs in case of pluto lpdfp so our tool is available in the pluto's github repository to conclude we relaxed the ilp formulation in pluto and we solved an ilp instead of an lp we solved an lp instead of ilp sorry uh, we presented the Pluto LP DFP framework in which we decompose the affine scheduling problem into three stages which, uh, with perm permutation and fusion, scaling and shifting, and loop skewing components. Loop skewing was introduced only if necessary, that is only if it enabled tiling. The, decompo the decouple uh, framework uses ILP at each stage as opposed to, uh, uses a LP at each stage as opposed to ILP, and it avoids the construction of linear independence constraints. We observe an improvement of uh, 68x over Pluto and 5x over 5.6x over scale fuse in auto transformation time. So finally, I would like to thank the reviewers of PLDI for their valuable feedback, India and Cefipra for the collaboration between ENS and IAC, and Google India and ACM for funding my travel to PLDI. Thank you. We have a few minutes for questions, and if you have questions, please uh, line up behind Michelle at the mic there. Sorry. 
Thanks, Michelle Strott from University of Arizona. I enjoyed your talk. Thank you for the presenting this work. What's your intuition behind, um, uh, so you've decomposed the space of possible schedules, which means you, you are not searching parts of the, you're cutting down on possible schedules, but you still got the, the same schedules. What's your intuition as to how that worked and whether that's gonna generalize to more codes? So we have a few results in the paper where we, uh, in, we have certain benchmarks from Polybench where we don't find the same transformation as Pluto, but the impact on performance was less than 10%. So what we miss on is something like where we have skews, but it does, it does uh, skew, the, the skewing does not enable loop tiling. So if it, it had enabled time, uh, tiling, we would, have any, uh, we would have found it. So, in those, so it's, the impact on performance is very less. So we, may, uh, we don't have a qualitative, uh, quant, uh, we don't have a uh, formal argument on wh where we miss on, but in practice, especially in case of larger benchmarks where loop fusion becomes very important, uh, this, uh, we, uh, the ob we wouldn't miss out on multiple solutions when we don't model the full space. I like your formal approach very much. It's almost two decades ago, it's, uh, I did this, other people do uh, study loop fusion as uh, the mean K-way graph cut, and there's a running into NP hardness, and, and now you have a different solution that you, uh, you can reach for optimal solution that looks really very nice, and also you integrate with loop tiling, that which wasn't done before. Um, I just one day, the, for the linear independence constraint, can you explain a little bit at a high level what that is? The dependence constraint? Yeah, in your formulation. So the dependence, the dependence, linear independence constraints, sorry. Uh, so linear independence constraints, uh, what they say is you, f most of these transformation frameworks find the transformation matrix row by row. So you find the first row and you check for which column in the first row has a z uh, if the high, if the row has a zero uh, has an entry to be zero in one of the columns. So basically, you tr you try to uh, so each each row in the transformation matrix, if you view it as a hyperplane, then the linear independence constraints they model the null space of the hyperplanes that have already been found. So the newly found hyperplane will have a component in the null space. Therefore, it'll, it'll be linearly independent, uh, the newly, uh, it'll be linearly independent to the ones that have already been found. Okay, um, we are out of time and we need to move on to the next speaker, uh, but thank you very much uh, for this great talk and let's thank uh, Arvind again. Thank you.